Every Monday night, the concert hall in the Royal Hospital Donnybrook in Dublin becomes a little part of Wales. This is where the Dublin Welsh Male Voice Choir comes to practice. Singing in four-part harmony almost seems to be part of a Welshman's DNA. There's nothing better than actually singing together. Helps to have a couple of drinks on the way, but uh, that happens after the practice sometimes. But it's a great social activity that, that brings people together. Great fun you can have, great camaraderie. And Michael Hayes has been enjoying that camaraderie since the choir started in 1966. Before that, the Welsh grouping here favoured such things as talks on poets. The choir changed that. It was great crack from the very beginning, which was part of what we were looking for. It was uh, rather more exciting than examining the works of these Welsh poets. And we had good fun. By the way, cooking and rugby are Michael's other passions. At the drop of a Welsh daffodil, Keith Young is able and willing to arrange music for a choir. He certainly had plenty of practice. In 1970, the Dublin Welsh Choir was looking for a musical director. I said, look, I'll step in for the time being until you get a permanent one. And 40 years later, I was still conducting them and, uh, and until I retired <laughs> a year and a half ago. After his 40 years, Keith got a presentation from the choir and an MBE for promoting Welsh music. But of course, no one does this sort of work for a medal. It's done for love of the music. And doing it for the love of the music is what motivates Keith's successor, Geraint Waters too. Now, this is a Welsh choir, but actually about two-thirds of its members are Irish, and that includes the choir's secretary. He looked at different types of choir music and plumped for the Welsh. This was one that pulled me, pulled me very closely and pulled me very, very, very strongly. And I suspect many of the Irish people feel the same. They hear the music, it grabs them, it pulls them, and they say, that's, what, that's the sort of music that I want to sing. Certainly another Irishman, Alfie Timms, had that same experience of the music pulling him in. I wanted to sing, but I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. And one night I went to hear the Dublin West Choir and I said to myself, that's it. That was May 1983 and I've been here ever since. Just follow, follow the beat. And, then... and just like the Welsh members, a lot of the Irish didn't join for the music alone. There's a different kind of social life around the choir. It's more fun, there's a bit more teasing among the lads goes on and of course there's a little bit of drinking as well afterwards, not before performances. But the atmosphere is very informal and that's what I, I enjoy. Of course, quite a few of the pieces are sung in Welsh. So how do the Irish members cope with that? Well, they use the choir's website. On the website, members in the members area, people can access not only the music for their part, or the, but they can also access the phonetic, the spoken Welsh. So really it's a matter of logging onto the website and spending your time learning. It, it, it sounds daunting, it absolutely isn't. It's very simple. The voice they hear is Keith Young's. And this performance shows it works. So, what's it like to be a Welshman living in Ireland? The Irish are so much like the Welsh, you're bound to settle down there, you know, you can make friends and you make Welsh friends, you make Irish friends and, and uh, it's fantastic and uh, I had no notion, after about five years I said, no, I'm not coming back, it's, this is too good to be true. Michael Hayes too loves living here, but he's still a Welsh rugby supporter and he collects match programmes. I have everyone going back to 1965, for some reason I don't have the one of my first trip to Ireland. Don't ask me why, but that's not here. That's the missing uh, jewel in the crown at the moment. 
and a significant jewel in the crown because that first trip to Dublin in 1964 was when he met his wife Rita at a dance. The attraction was immediate. She was the one girl that could rock and roll, like I rock and rolled in Wales. So that's when I asked her to dance and it was instantaneous. Was it instantaneous for you too, Rita? Uh, not really, but we still rock and roll. <laughs> so there was obviously some magic there that night because we still rock and roll. Work or women seem to be the main reasons Welshmen end up here. Keith Young too met his wife at a dance. We met on a Wednesday, I think, on, or Thursday, and then we went to dance on a Friday, and by the Sunday, I think it was, it was definitely love at that stage then, you know. He'd come to a cork competition with his local Welsh choir. He was very dashing looking. He came in in his blazer and his... They ran in out of the rain, actually. It was by accident he happened to be at the dance. And, uh, no, I, I fancied him, and it was even better when he asked me out then, so that was it. But what he didn't tell you was that we made a date for the following Saturday, and he stood me up. A misunderstanding, Keith says. And over the years, Irish women have continued to bring in supplies of young Welshmen for the choir. But when Ireland plays Wales, allegiances can be strained. Rita would get at me a little and be very supportive of Ireland, of course. Uh, the children, when they were younger, were well supporters. They've now switched. Um, grandchildren are very, very Irish. Given the links between Welsh singing and rugby, the choir recently reissued a CD of Rugby Nation's anthems. But when it comes to the future, Geraint Waters has plans for change. I'm looking to broaden the repertoire out, taking in European music, going slightly outside, and more modern music, slightly outside the traditional Welsh repertoire perhaps, but whilst retaining that same quality of sound that distinguishes Welsh male voice singing. Thank you.